morning, LNC. I am here today with Superintendent Shannon Stein and District Healthcare Coordinator Rebecca Shipman. And we felt that a short video explaining to our parent community the measures that we are taking here at LNC to be prepared for any type of consequence or impacts we would have from the coronavirus is in order at this point. As you know, we shared a communication a couple of weeks ago regarding this, and we wanted to come back and answer a few more questions that we felt like our parents might be wondering about. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Stein. Yes, thanks, Sarah. So um, one thing I want to reassure our parents is, is that we are looking at this situation from all different angles. Um, how can we best prepare our students? How can we communicate to our parents? How can we prepare our teachers and make sure that we have the safest environment for our students? So currently, we are in um, communication with the Department of Public Instruction, who is running point with some of the other organizations that would be important, like health departments, CDC, um, and then obviously we're getting some information from the Mecklenburg County Health Department. So we take all of that information and we um, are making decisions on behalf of the school. And so at this point, we are feeling like we're pretty prepared, but we have some, um, that's an ever evolving thing and we will continue to monitor that. Um, but the first thing we looked at was how can we best prepare our students by um, looking at illness prevention and best practice as it revolves around how they interact with each other day to day. And for that, I'm going to to turn it over to our district health care coordinator, Ms. Rebecca Shipman. Right, so thank you. So what we are doing basically with our students is what we should always be doing. We are um, participating in best practices, for example, um, going over hand washing techniques, making sure students know the proper way to wash their hands, when to wash their hands, when to use hand sanitizer, which of course is when you don't have access to soap and water, why soap and water is better than hand sanitizer, giving them the information that they need about the coronavirus, not all the information that they're seeing on the news. As we know, the news um, really likes to sensationalize, so we are trying to keep it just down and simple with the facts, with the information on a student grade level format so that we can um, help them to not be anxious. Some of our students are anxious about what they're seeing on the news. Um, some of our students are not informed enough or don't have enough wherewithal to, to be a little more concerned as far as washing their hands and um, staying home when they're not feeling well, communicating to their parents that they're not feeling well. We are um, going into the classrooms and giving these hand washing classes, making sure that teachers are also um, using that in their curriculum, especially in the science classes and health classes spending some extra time on cleaning in the classrooms. The teachers are using um, the cleaning supplies that we have always used. For example, this is flu season, so we're doing it just like we always do in best practices. Uh, teachers are cleaning the desks, um, all the surface areas. Our facilities director, Mr. Abel, has done a fantastic job of keeping current with the CDC and our cleaning crew. They are cleaning um, surfaces like uh, doorknobs and light switches and things that might not always get touched on, but they're doing that um, more vigorously than ever just to help keep our, our students and our environment um, safe and germ-free as possible. So one of the things that I think that a lot of parents might have questions about is what are we doing as far as field trips and group activities? And so um, one of the things that we're looking at is the State Department. Um, so there are a few high school trips that were uh, scheduled to go abroad at um, spring break time. And currently the information we have is that the destinations they're going to are safe. That may change um, as the State Department makes recommendations and changes um, those warnings for different places, we may have to adjust. Another large trip that's coming up is our Washington DC trip. And for that, we're in communication with officials from Washington to see whether or not they feel that is still safe. Um, and we coordinate with the tour guides that they're um, making sure that they're not going to have an experience where they can't get to things and or it's deemed safe to go. So currently, as it stands, all the recommendations for the trip we have are gonna to continue to go on as planned, but I would advise our parents that we're going to have to be watching that as things go on, and we're, we're gonna do whatever is advised to us by either the State Department, CDC, or the local health department as far as best practice. So if they change those recommendations, then we will obviously adjust as such. Great. So, yeah. 
Um, Shannon, can you talk to us about what if an extended closure, what that might look like yeah. at LNC? And um, so obviously we are hoping for the best, but preparing for if there would need to be something, a change. Um, the great thing about LNC is we've run e-learning in fifth through 12th grade for years. So our teachers are prepared. They know how to use different resources um, and have the devices possible to do that. A lot of schools we're watching on, on the coast right now that have bigger infections and currently what they've been doing because students at this point with this particular virus seem to not be as susceptible as some of the other um, populations like the more compromised or older populations. Um, so what they've been doing is they've been closing down maybe for a few days, doing a deep sanitation and then reopening. Um, if we do that, we already have a plan in place easily to do that because that's what we do in inclement weather. Um, however, we also want to be prepared if there's a possibility for a longer closure. That would mean a little bit deeper um, change in what we would do as far as instruction because of the extended period of time. And we'd have to consider what we would do with the elementary students. Um, so we do have um, some plans in place. We're working with our technology facilitators. We have Ms. Sarah Dankart at the middle school and Jamie Lord at the high school who've been looking at best practice and different programs. Um, and if it looks like there's a possibility then we are going to do some additional trainings for our teachers um, and the elementary staff is already working on how they might do um, individual learning um, experiences for each of the students and they are in the process of getting those plans to Miss Holland now so it won't be something that we will react to it'll be something that those plans are in place if in fact we needed them all right, well, we just want to close up by saying that if anyone out there has additional questions or further concerns, the best place to start is with your building principal um, or Ms. Shipman, again, our district health care coordinator. Mm -hmm. And all of our contact information can be found on our website at lncharter.org. Thank you very much.